Hi there, it's Jeff here with a video on inflation. Let's spend a few minutes thinking about the importance of inflation targets. So inflation target is basically part of monetary policy and it's where a central bank, such as the Bank of England or the US Federal Reserve, sets a specific inflation percentage, percentage rate, as their goal, as their policy goal. Typically they use one or more measures of the consumer price index. Now the aim of a target is to guide monetary policy, hopefully, to maintain price stability, to promote the conditions for economic growth and provide a more predictable, less uncertain economic environment. Uh, many nations have adopted inflation targeting, not always, uh, not necessarily a fixed point, but sometimes a range. Uh, India, the Reserve Bank of India, targets 4% inflation, but with a tolerance band of plus or minus 2%. New Zealand, one of the first central banks to introduce inflation targets, initially targeted 0 to 2%, but now adjusted to 1 to 3%. And now here's the inflation rate for the UK. Uh, since uh, January of 2000, you can see it's been quite volatile. And obviously the last few years, we've seen the cost of living crisis with inflation rising to 11.1% in October 2022. So there's the inflation target uh, that the Independent Bank of England seeks to achieve, uh, an inflation target of 2%, a little bit of latitude, 1% either side, but essentially they aim for 2% inflation. So the aim is to keep inflation at or around target or get it close towards target over time. So why do countries use inflation targets? Well, first of all, it's the aim of price stability. Uh, crucially, if you've studied the Phillips curve, you'll know that expectations matter when it comes to wage bargaining behaviour. So targets can help to anchor inflation expectations in theory because expectations then guide behaviour and behaviour uh, affects prices. And the aim is to really provide less uncertainty for both businesses and consumers. Uh, so within that, keeping uh, inflation within a, a range, a narrow range of let's say 1% to 3%, stable inflation can encourage business investment and also long-term planning. And again, in theory, if businesses are more willing and able to invest, again, that should boost economic growth on the supply side. A really important point to emphasise in, in an essay, in an exam essay, is the impact of inflation targets on credibility and confidence. So if the target is well understood, if it's built into the economic system, uh, an established, uh, credible target reassures the markets, the financial markets and fosters trust in central banks. Now, a really important point here is that if the markets believe that inflation will remain low and stable, that can help down, bring down the yield or the interest rate on government bonds. So essentially, it's the cost of the government having to borrow money. And if yields come down on government bonds, then the government, in theory, has more money to spend on things like education, health, uh, welfare and transport. Uh, flexible impl implementation is another important point. Uh, the target does provide a goal, uh, but many frameworks do allow for short term deviations from the target to accommodate, uh, to offset economic shocks, as we've seen the pandemic and more recently, the cost of living crisis. So the target is there. It hasn't changed in the UK. Inflation can and has deviated quite sharply from the uh, from the target. 11% in the sum in the autumn of 2022, but the target remained unchanged. That said, there are some drawbacks of having inflation targets. If a central bank is too rigidly focused on inflation, then that might limit their ability to address other priorities, such as growth, jobs, financial stability. One of the criticisms, for example, of the European Central Bank uh, in recent times, certainly in the last 15, 20 years, has been that they are too fixated on their low inflation target, and that has stymied growth and cost jobs within the monetary union. Uh, a rigid target can conflict with supply-side shocks. So when we get an oil price or a gas price surge, that enforces inflation above target. Now, if the central bank isn't prepared to be flexible, they would then raise interest rates and that could then harm growth and jobs. And there's also a risk that you set the target too low. And so there's a risk of deflationary bias. If you are if you have placed too much weight or emphasis on controlling inflation, keeping inflation at or below 2%, for example, that can lead to excessively tight monetary policies increasing the risk of price deflation when there's an economic downturn. And keep in mind also the perennial issue of imperfect measurement. 
So you target something like the Consumer Price Index, but as we know, the CPI does not accurately and fully reflect the cost of living for millions of households. So again, a too rigid an adherence to a target can lead to misaligned policy actions. Now, there is some debate in economics about whether or not targets can and should be changed over time. So I've drawn in another line there that 2% target is what we have in the UK. And that uh, there's no obvious reason to change it at the moment. But let's say, for example, for the purpose of illustration, we decided that the Central Bank, the Bank of England, would set interest rates with a view to meeting a 3% inflation target. Now, the key question really here is, would the inflation outcome be materially different if there was a 3% target in contrast to a 2% target? What might be the impact of the UK deciding to have a higher inflation target of, let's say, 3%? Well, in theory it would allow the Bank of England to loosen monetary policy because they don't have to clamp down on inflation quite as much. So they could lower interest rates maybe for longer and cheaper money would in theory lift consumption and investment to enhance short-term economic growth. On the other hand, if people think inflation will be 3%, perhaps even higher, workers and businesses may revise wage and price-setting behaviour, potentially embedding higher inflation expectations. Now, those of you who are really confident with your economics might want to think about the impact of a higher inflation target on the Phillips curve if there is an expectations augmented effect. Then this issue of credibility. So there could be a market reaction, a shift to 3% could lead to greater uncertainty about the bank's commitment to price stability. And again, that could have an impact, for example, on the yield on government bonds. It could also affect the exchange rate, pounding against the dollar or the euro. Higher inflation, on average, would impact on savers, reducing the purchasing power of savings. Many people on savings have seen real interest rates fall over quite a number of years. And those on fixed incomes could face greater strain. And of course, higher inflation would increase the amount the government has to spend on things like welfare benefits, public sector pay and so on. On the other hand, higher inflation, in theory, <laughs> erodes the real value of debt. Now, we know that the UK government's got national debt of 100% of GDP, about £2.6 trillion, if you're asking. Maybe a period of slightly higher inflation could bring down the real value of that debt, and likewise mortgage debt and so on and so forth, potentially easing the burden on public and private borrowers. However, I think you could make the case for saying that if inflation was on average 3% instead of 2%, you would probably end up with higher interest rates on all kinds of different loans, including mortgages and government bonds. So there we go. Hopefully this was a useful quick video for you. It's important to know what inflation targets are. And we looked at the arguments for and against having them and then just had a thought experiment. What might happen in the UK if we lifted the inflation target from 2% to 3%? Hope you enjoyed this macro video. Stay happy, stay safe, stay curious. And uh, we hope to see you soon.